Wow. I have to adjust my notes because initially I was going to say I'm being joined by Max, but it turns out it's the the whole band is here. Yes, we're, we're doing <laughs> it right. <laughs> well, I guess, did you really have anywhere else to be on a Monday evening? Band practice. Yeah. <laughs> band practice. Yeah. Band practice. Band practice. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Band practice with masks on and socially distanced, standing two meters apart from each other. Always. Of course. Of course. Yeah, Always. Always. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get rocking and rolling here. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Rock Metal Podcast. I am your host, John Harris. Usually on my right-hand side is my right-hand man, Gabriel, but he is back in school, so he will not be joining us for this call, unfortunately. But... Today on the Rock Metal Podcast, we have Give Me a Reason, who has a new EP called Vice Versa, which is being released on October 23rd. Right now, I'm being joined by the entire band to share some information about what they've been up to, as well as this release and a couple of tracks from the release. So, boys, welcome to the show. Hey. Hello. Hello. For having us. Yeah, thanks. You are quite welcome, boys. When Jesse sent me the stuff, he sent me the EP and a couple of the music videos there, I thought... Well, these are some cool hip hop and happening kids. Got to bring them on the show. <laughs> now, I guess one of the first things I wanted to chat about is I've got across my desk here that you guys actually flew all the way from Switzerland to Los Angeles to record the EP and not just record it at any studio, but specifically with Blake Roses of Pastel Recording Company. Exactly. Take yeah, us, well. Take us through that decision. Well, it was like we just redid the whole band thing, um, me and Darren. We just thought, okay, we had like Julie as a new member back then, and we just met Max. And we were like, okay, just do something like not here in Switzerland. Just go out there, go to California, and just get the whole vibe, the pop punk vibe from the coast, you know. Um, then we went there and just like, we just met Blake and vibe was perfect. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay. So silly question. Is there not a pop punk vibe in Switzerland? <laughs> no, it's cold here. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't compare it with like the in, in LA with Venice Beach or whatever is going on there. The whole mentality of the LA people and the mentality of the Swiss people is completely different. And like you said, uh, it's sunny in LA. Switzerland, not that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I guess my question is, how did you guys form to be a pop punk band then? Well... <laughs> good question i think it was um we just, i don't know pretty much. yeah i think it's like our whole childhood we just listened to pop punk and we have some big idols and i don't know um actually the matthias and i met at the simple punk concert here in zurich so it was already like where we met was a pop punk concert so it was pretty much like about to go down like that well, and Canadian Connection, Simple Plan, baby. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> well, that's, that's good to hear. Yeah, I guess now that I think about it, most of the bands I've chatted with from Switzerland are sad and angry. Uh, not so much sad and lonely. That's the letter, you see. You know, they're, they're like black metal bands and symphonic metal bands and things. Yeah, that's a lot. That, that's a lot like that. I think that also is like, even though we're not in the north, Switzerland has kind of a lot of like this Viking type of people, especially as soon as it comes to rock and metal. So it makes sense that they go to like that black metal, that symphonic metal stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, something else I noticed is uh, some of the recording credits for Blake is Good Charlotte, State Champs, Five Seconds of Summer. Not exactly a lightweight. He's got a, a, a career behind him for any of those listening in who aren't familiar uh, with uh, the Roses of Pastel Recording Company. Uh, now, was that part of why you guys got in touch with him or was it entirely by accident? You just kind of like bumped into this guy. Uh, I was super random, actually. Um, I was on Instagram 
like I'm always on Instagram, like every free minute I can do. I'm just <laughs> addict. Yeah, I'm actually addict, but <laughs> that's why I'm like, this is the platform I network on. So I was just looking at it and I was on Blake's um, profile and he just posted a story about like, yeah, I'm looking for new bands who are trying to record with me, stuff like that. So I hit him up and I was like, yo, dude, um, let's sit together, probably can do something. And he packs it back really fast and was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. And I think even the same day or the next day, we went to his place and we're just vibing and just started a song in the same evening. He probably felt bad for you guys. Like a bunch of Swiss kids that just showed up on the beach, needed a place to stay. <laughs> He's like, oh, man, I feel my heart's <laughs> going out to, the, to these Swiss kids with funny haircuts. They got to come in and. No, but we treated him here re him really well because we brought him chocolate from Switzerland. So exactly, we tried to bribe him, and apparently it worked. <laughs> <laughs> you could bribe me with some chocolate; that'd be fantastic. Uh, but don't tell him. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, perfect. Now, getting into these these tracks, my next question is because it's quite the the flight, you know, from Switzerland to L.A. Did you guys bring all of your equipment with you? Did you guys bring all of the songs already written? Did you guys already have, you know, the demos recorded? Like, where were you guys at in this process? But when you when you touched base with Blake, like, what did you tell him? So, uh, basically, we went to L.A. Uh, with just a bunch of demos. And uh, after that, we met. And we were like, okay, let's redo it from scratch. So, we just co-wrote the whole ep with blake at his place in nine days um yeah that's that's pretty much it nine days it doesn't sound like you guys only spent nine days so these songs <laughs> must have been written like you guys were set on these arrangements and everything already no we just did everything from scratch so the the lyrics the the instrumentals everything Wow. I think it was always also like the like the process we had, like we really wiped with Blake and it just worked and then we were there and just like it was like a puzzle and every piece just fit together. And uh yeah, as as Mattia already said, we had like I think I don't remember like three or four, maybe five songs that we were like, Yeah, we wanna do those. And uh and then we started the this co writing with Blake and we're just like, man. Let's just toss this and do everything from scratch. Mm -hmm. It's probably why all the song titles only have one word. It's just you didn't have time <laughs> to think of any other. <laughs> like, what's this song called? I don't know. Sad. All right. What's the next one called? Color. All right. What's the next one? <laughs> we just said color, so blue. Okay. Well, that's kind of funny. Boom. There you go. There's the next one. <laughs> yes. That's exactly. All right. Right. You got it. <laughs> Man, Enjoy nine days. That must have been a blur. And then we said bye bye. That's the only song that gets two words. <laughs> it's amazing. This is how we do it. Okay, cool. So six songs. I mean, is it really an EP or is it an album? Could you guys have maybe done more, released a full album? I guess that's kind of the, the big question is once you're hitting six songs, you're really on the cusp of something there. Yeah, actually, we just, we did maybe more <laughs> maybe we're, we're not, not telling tell. yeah we're not <laughs> telling um but we have these six tracks on the ep and um, yeah more more to come better keep it short and powerful than too long and then maybe you lo lose some energy at some point yeah okay very cool now i noticed uh, very well the marketing, I guess we'll say, for, for lack of a better term for right now, but the uh, album artwork and the music video for Sad and the music video for Funny and uh, the promo shots of you guys surrounded by cotton candy or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess maybe take us through this. Is this kind of like these colors? Is this... Are these give me a reason colors, or is this something that you guys wanted to do for vice versa? A kind of like pink esque uh, cotton candy, roses is covered in paint uh, uh, <laughs> kind of vibe. Yeah, actually, we wanted to catch the the whole pop punk vibe, positive vibe, and we just got with this color with pink, and yeah, 
it's not much behind this decision. So just we love this color and we want to do it like this. And yeah, like, hey, pink is cool. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Now, first track that was released, it was given a music video, is Sad, which is obviously a downer, man. Uh, <laughs> so take us through this track, Sad. You guys are traveling halfway across the world. You're living your dream. You're releasing sweet music videos, but you're sad. So take us through this. What is Sad about? Well, Sad about, uh, is about, um, you know, there, there are a lot of people who want to like, hold you back. When you want to pursue your dreams, um, that song is totally about that. And deal with it. You know, it doesn't matter if it's music or something like, I don't know, open a restaurant or something. Everybody has those people in their life. So we wanted to do a song about that. Mm -hmm. I see that. Yeah. The ones that are trying to force you into a mold and believe there's no way to live other than the nine to five life of Zurich. That's yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Exactly. And I think this whole EP is about that. That's the main thing. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. I imagine then you guys, is this autobiographical to agree? Because I imagine everybody was telling you how stupid you were to spend money going to LA to record a freaking record. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not one single person who said, yeah, let's do that. Do it. It's a good idea. No. Nope. No, I mean, it's, it's, I, I mean, I guess the most, even the most supportive person probably said, J "There's a studio down the street. Like, just go down the street." Yeah, yeah. Well, it was pretty much like that. <laughs> yeah, and everybody mean, else was like, I, "Shut I, up and go I, to school." I should have spent so much money on it when you can do it like here. And we we're like, "Yeah, but it's not the same." And it was the best decision in our life, I would say. Yeah, that was gonna be my next question. Are you now <laughs> able to shove it in those people's faces and say, "See"? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good to hear. That's kind of funny. Now, I guess my next question is, so <laughs> we have sad, want, want, and then the next one is funny, which is, you know, super uplifting, uh, which even has the drums upside down, at least where I'm on freeze frame uh, <laughs> on this music video. Oh, there we go. You guys got the balloons. You guys got the sweet guitars. Those are kind of like heavy metal guitars. Like, let's be honest here. <laughs> That's true. That's kind of a, yeah, <laughs> funny story. Um, back like a couple of years ago, um, Max and I used to play in another band. And um, that's uh, also where, like, at least my guitars are from. It's the it's third eye guitars. They're from France and they're awesome. And um, yeah, that I started to use them then. And since then, I have never been happier with them and those guitar that that sound was like a more it was a heavy pop punk easy core band um and i started playing ibanez at that point and i just fell in love with ibanez and i don't want to play anything else anymore and we still have those guitars since then and even though we're in switzerland we're not that rich that we can just buy new guitars so <laughs> You spend all your money flying to L.A. and then <laughs> and you guys had to work at a restaurant just to get money to go back. Then... <laughs> Pretty much like that. Yeah. But at the moment, we can't even go back. So, yeah. Yeah. OK. That's something you mentioned was that pretty much the entire EP is about chasing your dreams, regardless of whatever it is. Uh, you know, and you mentioned working in a restaurant, which, you know, uh, I'm a chef as as well. And I know that within the the culinary industry if you want to go open your own business that's that's kind of almost expected like how else are you gonna blaze your own trail or, or make a reasonable living but for anybody outside of that especially my parents they're like you don't go to school to work in a restaurant like you just go work in a restaurant or you just you know smarten up and go get a real job and it's like okay well what is a real job why don't we start there yeah yeah you know, and when I tell them how much they're like, when they go on that rant and I remind them how much money I make and I'm like, OK, is it a real job yet? Yeah. <laughs> oh. You know, where are we at with funny? And I think that kind of, that's kind of funny. You know, you, you pinpoint to somebody that you're making as much money as you would at a quote unquote real job. But in their mind, it's still not a real job. That's kind of funny. That's true. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. But what is funny? 
Well, funny is a, <laughs> I think, typically, typically a breakup song. Like, a relationship that didn't go well at all. Um, yeah, I think it's, well, it's actually fictive, but because, yeah, I had never had a breakup. <laughs> 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 so I wrote about, yeah, just in an imagination, you know, like with the, with the people around me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it's like, okay, yeah, we can do something like that. Um, yeah. This is like getting you getting unique. Have you never had a breakup because you've never had a girlfriend, or you've no, never no, had? A... I, I've had a girlfriend since eight and a half years. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, Go you, baby. <laughs> it's really hard writing songs that are sad or are about breakups with a guy that has uh, never had this experience. I tell you. <laughs> yeah, just watching. Them. Movie, so it's okay. We're just <laughs> asking your bandmates. It's yeah. Fine. <laughs> you have a lot. Of- <laughs> oh, Darren, how, how you felt about that? that <laughs> no, no, I need it in this syllabic pattern. Ooh, ah, uh, e, uh, ooh. No, I need it there. Can you? Uh, so then you write all the lyrics regardless of whether it's your experience or not? Yeah. Yeah, you have to because it's not the whole time about yourself. It's about everything. It's, it doesn't matter if it's just about the band or someone who is in the band or something that you experience. It's, I think it's important that you keep uh, like being open-minded. Mm-hmm. Okay, groovy. Then my next question is, you guys did this this L.A. trip, which, you know, fast forward from your L.A. trip, we can't even do something like that. So that brings me to the coronavirus situation. What has this year been like for you guys? Was it a blessing in disguise? Was it every, like nothing happened aside from shows, obviously? Everything was kind of normal? Or did it really change your guys' direction with what you were planning to do with the EP? It actually was uh, pretty confusing at the beginning because we we meant to have the two singles out earlier and in a shorter um, span. And then the EP should have been out, like by now it would have been out a month or, or one two. and a half, yeah. not two actually. Yeah. Um, we planned to have a tour in July. Uh, that one was obviously cancelled before it even was announced. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, we <laughs> had to do so many things. We had a lot of stuff planned. Um, that literally just kicked us in the face. And that's why we also moved the EP back, the whole release plan and everything to really take more time to get contacts, to work on the release plan, to work on the uh, press stuff with Jesse. Um, and I think it was like uh, yeah, a blessing in disguise because even though we couldn't do the tour stuff, we could prepare the release better. And I think for the release, it definitely was good. Yeah, but for playing, it's just <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, that brings us to my next question for playing. <clears throat> uh, bands are doing different things to keep the audiences engaged and their fan base engaged. Are you guys doing anything like acoustic sets or online shows of any kind? Or We only have one show um, that we could play in in a venue here in Zurich, they they gave us the venue for whatever we needed. That was like a project they started to to help young bands to still be able to play. And we could go into that venue, it's a pretty big venue where like big names play. And um, we we were able to play a show in front of thirty people there. Uh, we decided to make it important and invite some important press and label people. Um, but with fans, we didn't engage that much except for, for the releases and our social media work because we haven't played a show in that, like a proper, uh, open show for everyone in that constellation yet. And with those songs, so we don't really want to be the first time to play those songs to be a live stream. Yeah. We want it to be proper show. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Makes sense to me. Kind of a sad, funny blur of a situation. All right. Beautiful. Well, boys, that concludes my questions. Is there anything you guys wanted to chat about that I did not bring up or did not ask? Uh, keep streaming funny and sad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on repeat. Actually, there's some really good. Yes. <laughs> there's some really good comments on these on these uh, videos. Speaking of social media, I don't know. Do you guys consider YouTube to be social media? Yeah, you can say that. There's some really good comments. I'm so in love with this song. Whoop whoop, love it. Good job. Hearts and fire. Okay, whoa. This is actually really, really good. That's almost kind of like a backhanded compliment. Like, they weren't expecting you guys to be good. <laughs> That's why we Swiss people, you know? I never expect that. that. <laughs> yeah. It's so good when they don't expect you to be good. And then it's, then it's like a punch in the face. It's great. Yeah. El ritmo es muy simple, pero realmente me gustó. No los conozco de nada, pero sigan así. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Giuliano probably understood some of that. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah, the rhythm, is, the, the rhythm is really simple, but really, I liked it. Uh, I don't who no los conozco. Conozco is like knowing something personally. De nada, pero si gana si. So basically, he's saying like it's simple, but I dig it. Exactly. Yes. Cool, cool. Somebody said finally. Whoever Gino is, Gino's been waiting a long time for some new stuff from Give Me a Reason. <laughs> that guy. Yeah, love him. Yeah. This is, this is good. There's usually somebody somewhere who's saying, what happened? This is a train wreck, but everybody really seems to dig your guys' stuff. So how does that feel to finally release this and to see the adoration? The relief. It's really yeah. good. It's really so good. Amazing. amazing. We actually got one bad comment that I saw. It was like, well, that's cringy. Um, you don't have a bassist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Something like that. And he, he was bassist. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who played bass then? Was it uh, Blake? Yeah. Yeah, Blake played, yeah, yeah. He played it. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That happens a lot. Can you repeat that? I said, no, that's cool. That happens a lot. We're producers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Play, playing the bass on a record. There's lots of records out there, guys, that have absolutely no real bass player whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, I won't spoil anybody's fun, but there's records out there that don't even have real bass. It's a synthesizer or something else. Yeah. So as long as it does the job of making the girls dance and they buy merchandise, it's all good. It's all good. All good. <laughs> That's my job as a drummer. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You guys found a guy in Switzerland with rhythm. Uh, we love the bassists. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> actually, now that you mention that, how do you guys do it live? Like, how do you how do you jive without a bass player live? Do you guys have a like a backing track? Do you just not have a bass? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. For now, for now, definitely. If if something changes, or something comes up. Or if there's someone perfect for the for the job that we really want on tour, then maybe we'll change. But we like to be four people on stage. We have space to go crazy. Um, and it's just great like that. And we get along pretty well. So we're not just going to take in anyone. <laughs> Silly question. Why don't one of the guitar players play bass? Live. <laughs> that's, that's a good just, question. That's that's good question. question. <laughs> Actually, we, we did talk about that, but um, we ended up both saying we would like to play guitar, not because bass is bad, but we just really love to play what we play. So we just decided to, it was either put the, the lead guitar or the bass on, on, uh, on the backing track. The strings are cheaper. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Just get the easy bass plug in, baby. It's only like a hundred bucks. Come on. You'll never have to change strings again. <laughs> Life hacks with give me a reason. 
<laughs> That's right. Just give me a reason to buy it. Just give me a reason. <laughs> Great. All right, boys. Well, thank you so much for coming on to the Rock Metal Podcast today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you.